Whether you're new to photography or a budding enthusiast, I'm gonna share five things you can start doing today that will help you take better, sharper photos of your family and your kids. Hey everyone, my name is Desmond and this channel is for any parent that wants to take better photos, shoot better videos, and create lasting family memories. And if you're anything like me, you've got kids that will not sit still for photos. And as a photo enthusiast, I love being able to capture candid, in the moment memories of my kids. These photos are great because I can share them with the family, frame and hang them, or use them in photo books. But there is nothing, absolutely nothing more frustrating than taking out your camera, shooting a shot, thinking you just captured the perfect moment, only to realize that someone's face was completely out of focus. So today, I wanna to share five tips on how to get better, sharper, in-focus photos of your kids. All right, let's talk about the first and easiest thing you can do with your camera to get sharper photos. And that is to turn on the autofocus settings for face and eye detect. Whether you're using Sony, Canon, Nikon, or Fuji, if you purchase this camera in the last few years, odds are good you've got autofocus features for face and eye detect. I use Sony, so my tips will be about how I customize my settings for that platform, but you'll be able to do the same for any of the other systems I mentioned. So what is auto face and eye detect? Well, it's exactly that. These are features that let your camera automatically identify and lock focus onto a subject's face or their eye. And these are going to make a huge difference when shooting family photos. Kids are constantly moving. They're looking at the camera, looking at birds, getting distracted. So making sure your camera is doing more of the heavy lifting by snapping focus to their face and their eyes is really important. This is going to drastically improve the focus and sharpness of your shots. Now that you've got your face and eye detect turned on, let's take it one step further and set a custom button for your eye autofocus. This is really helpful because you can press this button and it will basically tell your camera to lock focus onto any eye in the frame and hold focus to that point. I set the custom button on my Sony a7R4 to the AEL button in the corner. So whenever I'm shooting the kids and just wanna lock on for fast shots, I hold this button down the camera locks focus to their eyes, and I shoot super sharp in-focus shots. I do the same thing for my Sony ZV-1, which is kind of my all-time favorite grab-and-go camera for family photos and videos. And on my ZV-1, I use the center button to activate eye autofocus. This camera is pretty awesome. It's tiny, convenient. It's a great example of how you don't need a larger mirrorless or DSLR camera to get really good autofocus features. If you wanna see a review about this camera and how I use it for family photos and videos, just leave a comment below. Okay, so you can set this up in Sony cameras by going into your menu, heading over to the custom button setting where you'll find the button you want to set for eye autofocus scroll until you find IAF, set it up, and you're done. And that leads me to another important autofocus setting. Set your autofocus mode to autofocus continuous, AFC. This is going to enable the custom eye autofocus button to work well, and it will basically tell your camera to constantly maintain focus on your moving subjects. Look, kids are fast and your shutter speed should be too. Uh, they don't wait for focus. They don't pose for more than a split second. And getting the right candid moment means you need to be fast. So for me, I like to shoot with a shutter speed of at least 1 60th of a second to make sure I can capture the right moment even when the subjects are moving. So while the kids are playing, running, squirming, or just being kids, faster shutter speeds will help you get those moments and keep them sharp and in focus. Now, this is pretty easy to put into practice when you're shooting outdoors. I like to shoot at the lowest native ISO when possible. So when I'm outside, I'm usually shooting at like 100 ISO uh, and at or close to my wide open aperture. That usually means I can dial my shutter speed up quite a bit to get the exposure I want. 
But what if you're shooting indoors, in dimly lit situations, or at night? Well, that's when I use one of my wider aperture lenses, like a 1.8 prime or even a 2.8 zoom. And then I rely more on my ISO. I try to keep my shutter speed, again, at around 160th of a second. And then I dial up my ISO to get the right exposure. And how high you turn up your ISO really depends on a few things, right? One, the lighting situation. How much do you have to compensate for indoor lighting or nighttime? Two, the dynamic range of your camera. So let's talk about how much detail in the highlights and shadows your camera captures and how much you can actually recover in post with software like Lightroom. And then there's the low light capabilities of your camera. So cameras like the A7S III are incredible at low light performance, while others may bring in more noise as you dial up your ISO. So these are things you'll just get more comfortable with as you shoot more. And here's an example in the shot, it's around 8 p.m. The kids are getting ready for bed with a story and we have one bedroom light on. So I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second with my ISO boosted to 4,000 and an aperture of 2.2 to get both the kids in focus. And I think this shot turned out great. With some minor adjustments, I was able to bring back all the detail and character of the shot in Lightroom. And honestly, I'm okay with a little bit of noise from shooting at higher ISOs. It's better than out of focus shots, especially when it's a moment you really want to capture. And I think noise adds a lot of character to those in the moment photos. I set this as a default shooting mode for my main camera, the A7R4. The continuous shooting mode is a feature that allows multiple photographs to be taken within a short time frame and in rapid succession. So basically it's rapid fire for your camera. This one has been a game changer for me. So I highly recommend changing your shooting mode to continuous. This is great for getting those action shots of kids playing, running, or again, just being kids. They do not sit still ever. So with continuous shooting, and faster shutter speeds, you can get the perfect moment and all the moments in between, giving you more options. This has really increased the number of perfect in the moment shots that I get. And again, with your camera, you don't have to have your continuous shooting mode set to the highest possible speeds. I set mine at high, which is about eight frames per second on the A7R4. There's a high plus mode that shoots 10 frames per second I use a much slower setting on my ZV-1, which on its fastest continuous shooting mode is like 24 shots per second because it has an electronic shutter. And that is crazy fast. I do not need that many photos. So I set it a little bit lower. And here's an example of how I use a continuous shooting mode on my camera. I lock on with the eye autofocus button. And when the moment's right, I hit the shutter button a few times for about half a second each and of the photos I shoot, I'm pretty confident there's a keeper in there somewhere. Don't we know our homes well enough after all the sheltering in place? What I really mean is if you're shooting in manual mode, which I highly recommend you do, get familiar with your home and the go-to settings like shutter speed, ISO, and aperture for all the different lighting situations in your house. I mean, this is where we've been spending most of our time and it's where a lot of our family memories are being made right now. So think about the different situations around your house. Is there a lot of natural light in your living room? Are the bedroom lights a bit too dim? Does the kitchen get a ton of light in the afternoon? Kind of like mine. Get familiar with the settings you'd like to dial in if you had to just grab your camera, shoot one of those rare family moments. This is especially useful at night because as much as I love my iPhone, shooting in low light, with a fast enough shutter speed to capture those moving kids, it does not do well, in my opinion. So sometimes you need to grab your camera and dial in the right settings for a certain room in your house at a certain time of day, just to get the shot you want. So practice shooting photos around your house during different times. I mean, we've clearly got the time. And when the right moment strikes, you'll already know what the setting should be, helping you get that shot before it's gone. Now, something else you can do if your camera has a functionality is to use your memory recall buttons and customize those for common uses. 
whether you set them for video, slow-mo, or maybe even a home setting if you want. For example, a commonly used mode might be like low light mode, which you can preset to a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, start your ISO at like 1200. Again, this really depends on the dynamic range of your camera. And then set, set your aperture to 1.8. You might not get everything you want tack sharp, like two kids with 1.8 is tough, but you can play around with the aperture once your settings are kind of locked in. It's really just about getting those settings in the ballpark, getting a couple shots off, then dialing it in a little bit more after that. And the most important tip uh, I can give you is to shoot first. In my opinion, when it comes to capturing the perfect moment with your family, a lot of it really is about luck. Most of the random shots we get around the house or when we're out and about, you know, they aren't going to look like they belong in magazines or viral Instagram posts. And that's okay. Because sometimes the best and most precious moments we capture, they might not visually look significant, or feel different from any other bedtime story, but it could very well be one of the most impactful or memorable moments for your kids. Maybe it's a bedtime story after a tough first day at school or a particular tea time with a favorite childhood stuffed animal. Any of these moments, however small, can still hold a lot of significance that we only realize years or maybe even decades after the photo is taken. So my advice is to just capture what feels right, you know, to shoot first. This is time we don't get back. And for me, I'm all about keeping an archive of photos and videos that the family and I can look back on. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching this video. And I hope these tips help you capture beautiful, timeless moments with your families. If you like this video and want to see more, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. All right, until next time, go make some memories.